Hey everybody, Jamin here from Game Show. One real quick thing before we get started, I'm going to be in Phoenix from May 28th to May 31st um, at the Phoenix uh, Comic Con in booth 5092 on Friday and Saturday. We're doing a meetup of myself and other PBS Digital Studios creators such as Mike Brignetta uh, from Idea Channel and Joe Hansen from It's Okay to Be Smart. Uh, we'll be meeting at the Deuce on 525 South Central Avenue in Phoenix at 6 p.m. on Friday, May 28th. And then on the 29th, we're actually doing a uh, D and D and D and Q and A, or maybe just D and D and Q and A. Yeah, there's a lot of ampersands in there. Anyway, we'll be doing that in room North 228 again at Phoenix Comic Con on May 29th. I hope to see you there if you're there in Phoenix. Anyway, let's get into it. As you might have seen, perhaps, maybe, maybe not, every once in a while the New Yorker decides to do something about video games. Um, they've done some stuff online, a really long profile of, uh, of uh, Notch, uh, the creator of Minecraft. They did this very epic profile of Will Wright a bunch of years back, um, Cliffy B. So when the New Yorker decides to dip their toe into the world of video games, they tend to be very exhaustive, uh, which is kind of their thing. Anyway, so this week they did a story on um, on No Man's Sky, which is a game that you've probably heard me talk about. It's a huge, huge game, and they've uh, really dove in. So this is a big development because they talked a lot about sort of the size of the universe there. It's this infinite space exploration game created by Hello Games, one of my favorite uh, makers of games, the same people who made Joe Danger, and it's going to have 18 quintillion number of unique planets around it. Anyway, so the game, um, it reveals some fascinating details about uh, about the developer and why they created such an enormous universe. What's interesting is that they use scientific equations to generate random numbers, and then these numbers define the shape of the universe. I'll link to the story below, but you should read it. It's a pretty good read. So we've talked about this technique in other games. I did a whole episode about it, but it's known as procedural generation, which has uh, become a really popular way to create content in a game that's too vast for one development team to do themselves. So, um, you know, the game that really put on the map is a game called Minecraft. You've probably heard of it, um, which can create a world that's 14 times the size of Earth. And so together, Minecraft and No Man's Sky represent a very different approach to game design because previously, every part of a game had been deliberately crafted by a designer who gave careful consideration to things like gameplay and uh, the discourse with the player. Obviously, there are older games that have procedural content in them. Um, developers use that, have used that for quite some time. But in terms of that being something that creates the vast majority of the things inside of a game, that's a pretty new development, at least at the scale that we're starting to see it with a game like No Man's Sky. So what this has essentially done is created a bit of, a, I don't know, a range or a dynamic in terms of design methodologies for, uh, for different game designers. On the one hand, you have Minecraft and No Man's Sky, which push this procedural perspective in terms of turning over creativity to an algorithm or a system. And on the other hand, you have creators like Miyamoto, for example, from Super Mario Brothers, um, who placed the first mushroom so it would bounce off the warp pipe and the player would always end up getting it. That was something that was sort of added to the game. They realized that this was so good that they would use it as a rule for the game. But Mimono has talked a lot about um, sort of having a very specific design perspective in which they don't um, they don't do a lot of playtesting. They sort of trust Miyamoto to create things himself. So No Man's Sky is super interesting because I think it represents this sort of pivot point where all of a sudden the No Man's, Man's Sky team takes a top-down approach um, where it's mathematics that unfurls creativity. And in fact, the New Yorker article Grant Duncan, who's the art director for the game. Um, I actually did a piece on Grant for Kill Screen that I'll link to in the description. He actually gets distracted by some of the things that get created inside of the game. So this is where things for me get really, really interesting as someone who looks at games. Um, you know, In our Minecraft episode, we questioned whether Minecraft and by extension No Man's Sky represented a paradigm shift. And paradigm shifts are an idea that were, that were introduced by Thomas Kuhn in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. And it refers to a new discovery or practice or theory that comes along and up turns the established assumption of doing things. What I'm curious about is why people are interested in No Man's Sky. And I'm curious, you know, because there isn't been, there hasn't been a lot of you know details about how the game's actually gonna work, what you're gonna do, who you're gonna fight, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And so I'm curious whether a system alone is enough to carry it into the future. But I'd love to know more about what you're interested in and whether or not you think uh, procedurally generated designs, specifically with No Man's Sky, is gonna be something that you see a lot more of in the future. And uh, obviously you should check out that New Yorker story. So hash it out in the comments and I'll see you all next week and if you are in Phoenix you should come see me as well all right